I'm Deborah Borchardt, and this is your Marijuana Money Minute. Cannabis technology company Akerna said that cannabis sales over the Labor Day weekend exceeded a quarter of a billion dollars. However, the increase was lower than in previous years. Now, this was attributed to the fact that people can buy cannabis pretty much all year round. August sales were big, so they really weren't waiting for the big holiday to buy anything. We have uh, a few earnings to review this week. Charlotte's Web not a great quarter. They reported that their revenue fell from 25 million in 2019 to 21.6 million for the 2020 second quarter. They missed their average estimate for revenues, which was 25 million. They also missed the earnings per share estimate of a negative four cents. They came in at negative 13 and they delivered a net loss of $14 million for the quarter. That's versus last year's net income of 2.2 million. Fire and Flower reported second quarter revenue of $28 million. Still, they had a net loss of $29 million. High Tide reported revenue in its third fiscal quarter of 2020 of $23 million. Now that was a big increase, 180% from last year's $8.29 million for the same time period. High Tide also delivered net income of $2.11 million versus a loss from operations of $4 million for the same time period. True Leave Cannabis is jumping out of Florida and into Pennsylvania. They're buying Pennsylvania's Pure Pen and Pioneer Leasing and Consulting, as well as the dispensary operator Keystone Relief Centers. Uh, True Leave has agreed to acquire Pure Pen for an upfront payment of $46 million. Arizona-based Fibonacci Brands is buying the cannabis company Darwin Brands from Harvest Health and Recreations for an undisclosed amount. Darwin is part of Arizona Natural Selections. They were bought by Harvest Health in February of this year in a deal valued at about $30 million. Talk about cost of money. Farmhouse is costing Canopy Rivers millions as it works to keep that company afloat. Farmhouse missed its cash flow goals and the problems have led to a real deterioration among the partners causing a bunch of flying counterclaims of bad behavior by both. Canopy Rivers says it will act as a debtor in possession lender for Farmhouse and provide up to $7.2 million in dip financing. That will allow Farmhouse to keep operating day to day. Canopy Rivers owns 49% of this joint venture. And finally, talk about uh, needing money. MedMen was able to borrow another $20 million, but the company is paying 18% interest and you thought your credit card balance was bad. And that's it for this week. I'm Deborah Borchart reporting for the Green Market Report.